Hello, volunteers from WWB. I am very glad to be here today as one of the lecturers of our online teaching program. My name is Matrika Rizal. I am from the beautiful land of Nepal. I am running a local volunteering organization called Volunteer Service and Support Nepal VSSN. And I have been doing this for over 28 years. Because I have a deep love for children and people in the country, I decide to do what I can to give them a bright future. Part of my jobs include introduce people of the amazing Nepal. So let me introduce to a bit to you a bit. Although I, lo I love my country a lot, there are still people suffering from problems of underdevelopment. But we believe education is the key to the problems. The abrupt upcoming of COVID-19 only made this situation worse. So we designed the online teaching program in order to compensate all the children. In my um, lecture in the beginning, I want to introduce a little bit more about myself. As I said to you, my name is Matrika Rizal and I live in Nepal and in Kathmandu. Uh, in my family, uh, me, my wife and I have two children, uh, my son and my daughter. My son is now he's 16 years old and my daughter is 12 years old. And I have my both parents uh, who live in Kathmandu, near Kathmandu. The place name is called Bhaktapur. Uh, my mother, my father, they live there and uh, in my extended family, uh, my brother uh, and his wife and two children, they live in, in the United States of America. Uh, here in Kathmandu, I'm running this uh, volunteering program for the last 28 years, I said you already. And I'm a program director at VSSN, Volunteer Service and Support Nepal. This is a local Nepali volunteering organization and we work with foreign volunteers mainly. And we are working uh, with uh, uh, different volunteers coming from all over the world. Um, for example, America, all over the Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, uh, China, from all over the world. Uh, there are different volunteers, they come to Nepal and we organize uh, their program and we run it. Uh, we are uh, running our program in different parts of Nepal. Um, in Kathmandu, Pokhara and Chiton are our major uh, focused area. We work there. I want to introduce a little bit about our country, Nepal. Uh, you have seen in the map, um, Nepal is between China and India. There are two countries between India and China. One is uh, Nepal and another is Bhutan. So Nepal is on the lap of Himalaya. And actually Nepal, Nepali land is very diverse to land. Uh, there are major uh, three kind of land we have. Uh, we have 17% flat land which is uh, near Indian border which is called Tarai and we have 68% hilly areas between Tarai and uh, Himalaya and 15% Himalaya. There are uh, eight tallest Himalayan peaks uh, out of 14 are in Nepal which, has, which are above 8,000 meters high so altogether eight tallest all over the world. Uh, they are in Nepal. We also have some famous wildlife conservation area which are famous for tigers and rhinoceros. Uh, also, there are many other animals like um, elephant, deer, um, leopards, and there are many, many uh, different kind of animals. They live in these uh, conservation areas. And also we have very famous uh, world heritage sites uh, listed in different parts of Nepal, like in Kathmandu Valley, there are several. 
and uh, Lumbini, where the Buddha was born. This is another famous area to travel. And there are other many Hindu uh, temples are in Nepal. Uh, and there are so many uh, trekking routes are also in Nepal. So many Western people, they come to go to trek to the Himalaya, which is very famous. And we have uh, different rivers uh, for rafting also. We have world famous rivers for rafting. Nepal is one of the tourist destination which is very famous in the world. And uh, in, in Nepal, uh, most people are Hindu. They follow Hinduism. This is a religion. Uh, about 80% people are Hindus and about 10% people they follow Buddhism, Buddhist people. And other 10% uh, uh, includes uh, Muslim, Christian, Jain and Sikh religions. They are also here. Uh, most of people, like 80% people are Hindus and Hindu religion is uh, not very strict religion. It's uh, very flexible. People are uh, very open and they welcome other religious people also. So in Nepal, we are very peaceful. People love peace. And uh, Nepal is a small country in the world map, but if you see inside it, uh, there are so many varieties of people live here. There are 30 different languages, different, different ethnic groups, they live here. Uh, and But uh, Nepali, Nepali language is the, uh, spoken widely all over the Nepal. Our national language Nepali is spoken, but we have local languages which are around 30 languages. Uh, there are so many ethnic groups uh, and they have their own language, culture and festivals. There are some festivals which are celebrated all over Nepal, which are also called national festivals. For example, Dasain, Tihar, Holi, Shivratri, uh, Gaijatra, uh, Ram Naomi, you know, Janai Purnima, there are so many festivals, but major festival is Dasain and Tihar is the main uh, number one festival celebrated, which is around September, October time. Uh, we have our Nepali own calendar, so according to our calendar, it lies in September or October. Okay, and about, uh, I want to uh, tell you about a little bit about the food habit, uh, what kind of food Nepali people eat. Uh, in Nepal, Nepali people, they love dal bhat. Dal bhat is the dish which we eat every day, two times. Uh, it sounds funny for you guys, because your food habit may be different, but our food habit is dal bhat, is the major food. Uh, in the morning and evening, we eat this. Dalbat, in Dalbat, uh, we have rice, lentil soup, and varieties of uh, different vegetables and sometimes meats. So it sounds like we eat the same food every day two times, but uh, actually, if you, if you live here, if you practice this food, it's a slightly different every day because uh, our cooking style is slightly different and then uh, the vegetable and lentil are different, but rice remains the same. But rice also has so many varieties, but when we buy rice, we buy a sack of rice. So this lasts for one month, one and a half month. Uh, and then the other vegetables we buy every day and meat also. So uh, in Nepal, not uh, we don't have seafood. Because Nepal is landlocked country, uh, we don't access to the sea. Actually, you can buy seafood in the supermarkets, but uh, they are um, quite expensive. So Nepali people, they love uh, mainly um, chicken and goat meat, which is number one. And after that, uh, some, some um, ethnic groups, they eat buffalo and uh, pork are also eaten here. Uh, and then actually fish, is eaten you can buy fish in most of the places but they come some fish come from india and some come from the um, the farming fish farming from in tarai area uh, they have fish farming and and sometimes we can also get the river fish uh, from uh, because in nepal there we have so many rivers so 
have some fresh fresh river fish also sometimes we get it this is um, so this is an introduction of uh, some about some people culture and land of nepal i want to uh, introduce um, three sentences in nepali language which is useful and which is not difficult to remember uh, number one is uh, namaste so uh, namaste is a greeting we do we do like this namaste and um, this greeting you can do in the morning afternoon evening anytime when you, you meet some people uh, like um, namaste meaning uh, hello a good morning good afternoon and goodbye also so this all namaste you can do it and uh, while, while you are teaching to the children you can introduce uh, yourself by, in nepali language uh, i want to give you an example uh, like mero naam matrika ho mero naam matrika ho my name is matrika Mero des Nepal ho. My country is Nepal. Mero des Nepal ho. My country is Nepal. Once again, I want to repeat. Namaste. I want to change the name. Mero nam John ho. My name is John. Mero nam John ho. Mero desh China ho. My country is China. So uh, you can remember these uh, three uh, Nepali words so that you can use uh, sometime. Let me uh, tell you a brief introduction of um, our, our organization Volunteer Service and Support Nepal. Uh, this is a non-governmental organization which is also called NGO. Uh, in Nepal, we have so many NGOs. In Nepal, there are many uh, government, uh, non-governmental organizations uh, are working. They are established to help government in social and development issues. Actually, NGO, uh, they established to help the government in uh, infrastructure, are the basic uh, development issues like mainly health, education, environmental protection, these kind of things there for because government facility is not enough. That's why NGO are helping to the government. So our uh, NGO name is VSSN, Volunteer Service and Support Nepal, which is registered uh, according to the Nepal government uh, law. We are registered. Um, our organization is Nepal-based organization, Nepali community-owned organization. Um, our members uh, in our organization, all Nepali people. Uh, we are dedicated to provide year-round volunteering programs in the international volunteers to interact in development process. So we uh, hire international volunteers to work in Nepali development process, like uh, from China. Uh, when you become a volunteer, you are engaged with uh, VSSN and uh, you are helping together uh, to the development of the uh, education sector in Nepal. Our uh, organization is established to help Nepali society, mainly education and health issues for children and women. So our, this is our NGO focused area, the education of children and women. Okay. Our mission and vision. Our mission. VSSN mission uh, is to provide volunteering programs for international volunteers to interact in development process by involving in different activities. VSSN aims to support to enrich the lives of less fortunate children and women, mainly education and health issues. Our vision is, we believe that well prepared and good guided volunteers combining with well-managed program can make very positive changes in our society. Working with WWB volunteers in these five years, we have achieved our mission. 
And we, we are working together with um, WWB. Uh, BSSN have received uh, thousands of volunteers in last five years and ran different programs with high success with WWB. Uh, WWB and BSSN has been doing programs as like uh, teaching in classroom, environment protection, classroom painting, fun activities for children like dancing, singing, cooking, painting, uh, classroom games, etc. We are, we are doing varieties of programs. BSSN is one of the most important organizations for uh, WWB and WWB also uh, most important organization for VSSN. Volunteers have brought positive changes to local education through their efforts. WWB is committed to provide long-term international volunteer activities that reflect the Commonwealth character. So, I want to introduce our education system and how schools are working in Nepal. So in general, education system is in, in Nepal is not satisfying. There are private and pri uh, public schools. Uh, there are three uh, different types of private schools. Um, some private schools are very, very expensive, which is not uh, affordable for the general people. They are very, very uh, rich people, children, they, they go to these very expensive schools and we are not working with them. Mid-level, which is for higher middle class people, their the second level is mid-level schools, which are still expensive, which is uh, middle level. And we are not working with them also. So we are working with basic level schools which are affordable for mid-class people. So we are working this third category school because uh, most of the poor um, parents, children, they go to the, this school. Uh, this is not very expensive and then uh, our program will uh, benefit them, which is the need. Uh, the less fortunate children, they, for them, we design our program and we give them our maximum benefit uh, from our volunteers. And we also work with uh, government schools, um, which are called public school also, government schools. We work with them because uh, in the government school, the tuition fee is free, uh, children, they don't have to pay them. There is a very nominal fee, which is exam fee like uh, 100, 100 rupees, like $1 uh, uh, in, in four months, three months, they, they pay for the exam. And uh, in some schools, uh, in some government school, they are feeding the children also, they, they get the free food. Uh, but they have to buy a uh, dress, their school dress. And the children, uh, they have to buy like uh, pen, pencils and some instruments, you know, they have to buy. But the school fee and some uh, games like football, basketball, volleyball, whatever available, this is free in the school. They don't have to pay anything. Uh, and then uh, the, the family who have very little income uh, sources, they, their children, they go to the government school. That's why we are focusing our programs mainly in the government school and the, the private school also, uh, which are like uh, not very expensive fee in those private schools. And our target group is those uh, less uh, uh, beneficial children from the society. So we try to give our service to them so their uh, their education level and uh, their international exposure becomes very good in future that's why we are focusing uh, the government schools public schools uh, they are all over nepal from east to west north to south everywhere in every villages there is a, there are government school uh, they are not very bad, they are not very bad, they are okay. 
and government has invested a lot of money to develop their infrastructure and to pay the salary to the teacher. Government pay a lot of money. Uh, all government schools have their own buildings and teachers are uh, permanent uh, and well paid compared to uh, basic level private schools. Teachers are very well paid. But the problem is the, the uh, quality of the education is not uh, satisfying in the government schools. So uh, parents, they prefer uh, to take their children to the uh, private schools, even though they are uh, expensive uh, compared to the government school. Government schools are free of cost, but the, um, because of uh, the poor uh, quality of the education, uh, they are not able to uh, attract uh, parents. Uh, English is taught from the beginning from play group. Uh, children, uh, teachers try to speak in English with the children. Generally in uh, Nepal, private school focus in English, medium education, which are considered better than public schools. When children reach in grade 4, they can make basic English communication easily in the private schools. But compared to the private schools, public schools, uh, children, they don't have a uh, speaking habit in English, so they are not uh, fluent uh, in, the, in the English language speaking. Uh, there are several challenges in Nepal in the education sector. The major problem of the government schools are uh, teaching technique and teachers' quality and effort is not enough. Somehow, uh, schools exist all over Nepal, but the quality is not competitive at all. Some public schools in city area are good, but in rural areas, uh, almost all public schools cannot provide quali quality education. They just exist there. A uh, few public schools are uh, exceptionally good, uh, which are doing well, but it is very rare example. Nowadays, only uh, lower economic class people's children go to the public school. Uh, other all go to the private schools and private sector, which are providing better education in Nepal. So this, uh, I, I said you a little bit about the education, educational situation, uh, school situation in Nepal. Uh, I want to uh, talk a little bit about the impact of COVID-19 in, uh, in, in education sector in Nepal. On April 30, 2021, the Ministry of Health and Population of Nepal issued a public statement acknowledging that the epidemic situation in Nepal is out of control and facing the risk, risk of total collapse. So this is right now uh, that's happening. COVID-19 cases in India terribly increase, which are also affected Nepal. Nepal is getting about 8,000 new cases every day uh, nowadays, which is the highest number uh, compared to last time. This is second wave here in Nepal, uh, which come from India, and this is a very terrible situation. Uh, now Nepal is locked down and uh, daily life has affected very badly. It's, it's locked down right now. I'm, I'm sitting at home. I cannot go out. Um, the general impact uh, of COVID-19, I just talked to you. Uh, during pandemic, schools were closed about 10 months last time. Uh, 10 months schools were closed. Uh, it opened and again, now it is closed. Um, COVID-19 has not finished yet and there is a threat of second wave, yeah, which is actually growing right now. Um, the, the, the second wave came from India because uh, our Nepal and India border is open border and uh, people can easily go and come without visa. Uh, we don't need visa to go to India and the Indian people also can come to Nepal without visa. So, uh, because of that, uh, recently, you know, uh, the COVID-19 has uh, made a huge uh, effect here uh, in, in Kathmandu and also all over Nepal. Uh, 
uh, the, the education system during the um, lockdown, during the pandemic, um, is difficult. Uh, there are children, they are doing online classes. Like my son, my daughter, they are uh, doing online classes from home. In rural uh, villages, people cannot conduct online classes because there are a very uh, low number of people have devices like laptop, computer, uh, smartphone and they don't have internet access in the rural uh, villages. Therefore, uh, education was not, was fully stopped during pandemic. Uh, that time, uh, education was, schools were closed fully uh, for 10 months and now it's open. In city area, now um, the children are doing online classes. But in villages, uh, schools are still open in rural villages because the COVID-19 has not affected because uh, the population is very low in the rural areas of villages. So schools are uh, running there. Um, actually, for 10 months last time, uh, all the schools, all the colleges, all everything was closed for 10 months which is very long time and it has affected children could not get the education uh, and the, in the government schools they cannot run online classes because in the village area they don't have uh, internet access uh, and then the the poor family children you know they 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 have they have they don't even have the smartphones so how they can run you know the internet is very far thing for them so uh, the education was fully stopped uh, during the lockdown in city areas like Kathmandu valley pokhara narangad biratnagar private schools run on like online classes some private schools can conduct very good online classes and they used Google Classroom, Zoom and Meet. Like my son is also, he's in a college, uh, class 11. So he's doing online class and which is very good. Uh, every day in the morning from 7 to 11, uh, they have online classes and they're running quite, quite good. So uh, there are actually challenges about uh, online classes. Like very small children, they are easily uh, distracted. Online class was affected for, effective for elder children who are about 12 years old. But for smaller kids, it was not that much effective. Teachers were teaching online classes from their home and online classes were not so much serious like real classrooms. For small children, uh, it was much less effective because they di distracted easily and played mobile games and some other things. Some uh, parents were monitoring the children during the online class, which was okay. In conclusion, my assumption is uh, that about only 30% of all Nepali children used online classes and only 10% was effective. So I want to talk to you about uh, our program, our uh, WWB volunteer program with uh, VSSN. Uh, volunteer, our volunteers are going to public schools and basic level private schools, both, both schools uh, they were going um, until last year. We choose those schools where less fortunate children study who come from lower income uh, families so that they can get benefit from our uh, international exposures volunteers. Our fo focus group of students are grade uh, four to nine. The children are uh, nine years old to 15 years of age. This is our uh, focus group. And about the classroom. So each class will consist maximum 50 children, maximum 50 children or average uh, 30 children. Our volunteers are coming in uh, two seasons, winter and summer, summer programs. Uh, each uh, lesson will last for 40 to 45 minutes. So one lesson, our volunteers, they have to prepare lesson plan and conduct class for maximum 45 minutes, one class. And uh, they were doing about uh, 
uh, every day like three to four classes for one group. Okay, so we divide, uh, if there are 10 volunteers, we divide these 10 volunteers in a smaller groups like two people or three people in a group. So uh, these two people, they go to one classroom and another two volunteers, they go to another classroom. Uh, like that we are conducting. And then uh, schools, uh, they, they open actually uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and they finish around 5 o'clock maximum. And some uh, smaller classes, they finish at 4 o'clock. Uh, in the middle, there is one hour break uh, at 1 a.m., 1 to 2 Oh, sorry, 1 to 2 p.m. Uh, there is a one, one hour break and some other small breaks are also there in other time. So, um, class uh, classes will start from Sunday to Friday and Saturday is a weekend uh, holiday, only one day holiday in Nepal. Uh, live online lessons or listening to a recording of a lesson. So actually, uh, in this live online lessons, uh, we you will be recording your uh, your uh, lesson, and in Nepal, I will go to the school and I will show them the video of what you have done. Uh, you can do fun games; uh, will be very very interesting, uh, and art and crafts and uh, mathematical games, music and dancing. These things uh, will be very helpful and very interesting so children will enjoy and also they can learn uh, when our volunteers are making lesson plan they can pick up any subject but it should be uh, educational very useful for the children in their life and it uh, should be interesting so uh, you should make lesson plan according to uh, these things Um, children, uh, they have uh, they have their course book in the school, and uh, it is rare that teachers do different activities like classroom games and extra knowledge activities. Teachers they are not doing that much. That's why uh, we need volunteers to show them you know different teaching styles. However, from our Chinese volunteers, children are learning different kind of creative extra activities and educational knowledge. Uh, the teachers uh, are very satisfied with our volunteers' help. Uh, our school teachers are very happy that we get volunteers from China. This program is very much welcomed and liked in the schools because children are having much fun and receiving unique uh, kind of knowledge uh, from different volunteers. So every every group of different volunteers, they have different kind of uh, knowledge and they prepare differently and uh, they do different things, which is very interesting for our children. And this uh, classroom activities that what you volunteers will do, this will and this will make a very positive impression to the children. Um, so I think uh, I have given some information which will be very uh, useful for you guys. And at the end, I want to um, talk a little bit about how to make a lesson plan. So, to make a lesson plan is not a difficult thing. Uh, you can choose any subject. Um, but um, usually our volunteers, they are choosing uh, their subject based on the culture and language. So, you can also teach uh, Chinese language to our Nepali uh, children. And also, you can make some uh, topic about the cultural, Chinese cultural uh, subjects. Uh, one example I want to give you, um, for example, if you choose a subject called the Great Wall of China is your subject. This is for example, okay, you don't have to make the same lesson plan. Don't follow this, just for the understanding I'm uh, telling you. So you choose a subject, the Great Wall of China, and um, in the subject you write the Great Wall of China, and then so you, uh, you have 45 minutes time or 40 minutes or 45 minutes. You break this time in three parts. 
नंबर वन टेन मिनट्स इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द ग्रेट वॉल ऑफ चाइना सो यू कैन इंट्रोड्यूस द ग्रेट वॉल ऑफ चाइना लाइक द ग्रेट वॉल इज इन इन द इन दिस 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 प्रोविंस इन चाइना and this is uh, this long uh, and this is the one of the most famous monument in the world uh, this kind of introduction you can give for 10 minutes and in number 2 you can describe more like um, you can uh, for for description uh, you can give like 30 minutes let's say 10 minutes uh, introduction 30 minutes no sorry uh, 20 minutes description so 10 minutes and 20 minutes is 30 minutes in description you can you can uh, tell the story about the great wall of china there must be some very uh, nice story uh, be, uh, which is behind the great wall of china construction time or some emperors because it took about 100 100 years to build the great wall of great wall of china so there must be so many stories uh, behind it so you can uh, describe one of the most interesting story uh, of the great wall of china in this 20 minutes and you have last uh, 10 or 15 minutes uh, in this uh, 10 15 minutes you can do some conclusion things like um, the introduction part and description part which you have already explained did the children understand that or not you check in this last 10 or 15 minutes you can ask children questions but uh, in the live class you can do the, do that but uh, in online class uh, you cannot uh, communicate with the children so at the end uh, in this last you can pick uh, some very important uh, words uh, uh, or important knowledge or points and you can describe that again so like that uh, you can make a make 40 or 45 minutes lesson plan and uh, you you know um, you when you are making this lesson plan you can uh, make it in in a group also with your friends and uh, turn by turn like if you have three friends uh, doing one class uh, um, one of the friend can do introduction part and another friend can do description part part and another friend uh, he or she can do the conclusion part so like that so all you in your group if you are three people you all are uh, participate in the in the classroom activity so this will be very uh, helpful i am just giving you this idea but uh, you know it better how to do it uh, so you can uh, make a lesson plan and according to to that you can make a great video and send that uh, to wwb office and uh, wwb office will send to me in nepal and when this pandemic will finish uh, when the school uh, starts again uh, i will uh, i will show this in the powerpoint uh, in the schools i will take that and i will take another video and how the the effect and the, what are the feedback i can talk to you again mm-hmm. so uh, i hope uh, this video which i made uh, from nepal will be uh, this lecture will be helpful for you uh, thank you so much uh, for having your time for coming uh, coming here watching me thank you so much namaste